All right, in this video, I'm going to do a few examples involving the remainder theorem. And basically, all the remainder theorem says, if you've got some polynomial, f of x, and you're dividing it by a linear factor that looks like x minus a, it says, if you do all that long division or synthetic division and you find the remainder, it says it's going to be the same thing as if you had plugged a into the original function. Okay. Um, so a few examples here. I'm even going to see if I can squeeze three of them in here. So in the first one, notice we've got a 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 6. That's our f of x that's being divided. In this case, we're dividing by x minus 4. So it says this number, that's going to be our a value, whatever you're subtracting. So it says if we have the function f of x equals 3x cubed minus 2x squared plus x minus 6. If you want to find the remainder when you divide by x minus 4, it says just plug 4 in. So we get 3 times 4 cubed minus 2 times 4 squared plus 4 minus 6. Let's see, uh, 4 cubed is uh, 64. 4 squared is 16 times a negative 2 will be 32. Positive 4 and negative 6 is negative 2. Let's see, uh, 3 times 64, that would be 180 and 12. Uh, so that would be 192 minus 32 minus 2. 192 minus 32 would be 160 minus 2 would be 158. So it says the remainder in this case, when you do the long division, would simply be the value 158. Okay, let's maybe do uh, one other one in this one real quick, and then we'll, we'll do the third example here in a, uh, a separate video. So again, notice we've got negative 4x cubed plus 8x squared plus 12x plus 16. We're dividing by x plus 2. Notice we could write the denominator as x minus negative 2. So again, you're kind of, uh, the number you're plugging in, again, like in the first example, I saw a negative 4, but, but I plug in positive 4. Here I see a positive 2, but I'm actually going to plug negative 2 into the function in the numerator. So if our function, again, is the top part, if we let f of x be negative 4x cubed plus 8x squared plus 12x plus 16, it says if we plug in negative 2, well, we'll just get negative 4 times negative 2 cubed plus 8 times negative 2 squared plus 12 times negative 2 plus 16. Okay, so let's see if we can't do this. Negative 2 cubes, negative 8 times negative 4 is 32. Negative 2 squared is 4 times 8 is another 32. 12 and negative 2 is negative 24, plus 16 is hanging out. Let's see, 32 and 32 is 64, minus 24 is 40, and another 16. I'm getting positive 56 as the remainder in this case. <clears throat> oh, what the heck, let's go ahead and do the last one. It doesn't look too terrible. Um, notice we've got x to the 6th plus 5x to the, f uh, excuse me, x to the 6th plus 4x to the 5th plus 9x cubed minus 4x squared plus 10 divided by x plus 1. So again, I could write this as x minus negative 1. That's going to be my a value that I'm plugging in. And again, we're simply plugging it into this function. Okay, so this is my f of x. I'm not going to write it all out. But f of negative 1, it says we would get negative 1 to the 6th plus 4 times negative 1 to the 5th, uh, 9 times negative 1 cubed minus 4 times negative 1 squared plus 10. If you take a negative to an even power, negative 1 to an even power, it's positive 1. If you raise it to an odd power, it's negative 1. So we'll get negative 4 here, minus 9. This will turn into positive 1 times negative 4, which is negative 4 plus 10. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's see. Negative 4 and negative 4 is negative 8. And negative 9 is negative 17. Plus 10 uh, would be negative 7 plus another 1. I'm getting negative 6 here if all my arithmetic is correct. So it looks like in this very last example, if we do our long division, we'll simply get a remainder of negative 6 after we do... Uh, the arithmetic.